if you are a new streamer, then your transitions probably look like this. Which, honestly, doesn't look great. But what if your transitions could look slick like this in under 5 minutes? Today, we are going to be talking about the best OBS plugin out there, and probably the only one I would call required for every streamer, the Move plugin by Exceldro. But before we do that, let's thank our sponsor for this week, Nexus Clips. Are you struggling to make short form content out of your amazing streaming content? Then this is the game changer for you. And the best thing, it won't cost you any extra time. Nexus Clips automatically analyzes all your streams in real time and uses advanced algorithms to select the best moments for your short form content. Then with only a few clicks, you can go from raw clip to a fully edited short with the title card, subtitles, really everything you need to have it ready to post to YouTube, TikTok and Instagram. Create shorts every week that please the algorithm and get seen by potential viewers to grow your stream easily and automatically with Nexus Clips. Create your account now by following the link in the description. Thank you Nexus Clips for sponsoring this video. Most streamers just do this thing that I'm going to show you with the transitions and that's it. But this plugin can do so much more, it's actually kind of crazy. So let's see if I can set you up much better transitions first, and then I'll show you two more advanced techniques that I use on my stream every single day. If you haven't installed the plugin yet, then let's get that done first. Find the link in the description below, which will take you to the OBS website so you can download the Move plugin. Once you've done that, open it and extract the files into your OBS folder. Now when you start up your OBS, you will see, well, nothing really, but down here in the scene transitions, you will have a new transition that you can add called the move transition. One of the big things is that when you have the same source on two screens, you can switch scene and you sort of see the cameras slide into each other and automatically resizing. But I am not too happy with how my game just sort of slides off to the side and disappears. To fix this, we need to talk about three different things that can happen when you transition to a different scene. First, if the same source is on both the A scene and the B scene, then it is a matching source. If the source is not on scene A, but it is on scene B, then it's an appearing source. And if the source is on scene A, but not on scene B, then it is a disappearing source. If you open the hamburger menu and head into the properties, then this is also the exact names that you will find here in the transition menu. Almost like I planned that. Anyway, for appearing and disappearing items, we definitely need to fine tune some settings. First things first, I'm going to add a second transition, the slide transition. Now set the transition back to move and open the properties. In the appearing and disappearing items, we are going to set the zoom to 100% and we are going to set the position to none. Then for the transition, set it to slide. And now when we switch from my gaming scene to the just chatting screen and back, you can see that the game actually slides on instead of that weird zoom out and to the right or zoom in and to the left that we had before. And that's it. You've already got your transition set up. However, you might still run into a bit of a problem. What if you have two sources that are not the same, but you still want them to do the morphing thing that the Move plugin wants, such as my camera with background here and my camera green screened over here. Luckily, there is a solution for this. Go into the source and add a Move Transition Override filter. For the match source, choose the source you're trying to match to in this case, for me, that is my main camera. If I can find it in this ginormous list, there it is. And then we are going to set the transition to fade. Now, when I switch back, you can see that the background fades in quite nicely. And when you go back, it fades back out again. But this plugin can do so much more. Let's say that you are playing a game that has HUD elements on the left and you don't want to cover those with your face. Then how about you can just switch the side of your camera with a single press of the button? This is also fairly easy to do. All you need to do is right click the scene you want your camera to shift on and add a move source filter. And yes, it has to be the scene because it's not going to work if you do it on a source. I'm going to call this one cam left. And once I've done that, I am going to scroll down and get transform. By clicking the get transform, you take the exact crop and position and rotation of your source and it completely remembers it. 
Now let's move the source to the other side. And just because I preferred, I'm going to transform and flip horizontal so that I'm looking into the screen. Once you found the position of your source, open up the scene filters again and just duplicate the filter and call it cam right. And now scroll down and once again, click get transform. And now when we click the cam left, we can see our camera switch to the left side. And when we click our cam right, our camera will switch to that exact position on the right side of the screen. And of course, you can add as many of these as you want so that you can shift around the screen exactly the way you want to. The cool thing is that you can also chain animations like this together, which means you can make your camera do a little dance if you wanted to. If you look here, I've actually made a chain of six different move sources, but if I wanted to trigger these one at a time, that would be hard to time manually. Instead, I'm going to add another move source, which I will call the camera dance trigger. And for the source, I'm going to choose the main camera and I'm going to set a custom duration of 10 milliseconds. Then I'm going to turn off the transform and scroll all the way down to the actions. Here we can see a simultaneous move and a next move button. Simultaneous move means that the moment that the trigger is done, it will also activate a different trigger, which in this case, we want to be camera dance step one. The next move means that once this trigger is done moving things, it will automatically activate the next one, which is exactly what we are trying to do for all the next steps. So step one will then automatically go into step two. Step two will automatically go into step three, etc., etc., until we get to the end. Now, when you trigger the camera dance trigger, it will automatically start doing the whole movement and you have a little dancing camera. Add a nice sound effect to that and you'd have a fun little channel point redemption. One thing that I don't like, however, is that it looks like the animation starts slow, then speeds up and then slows down again. That effect is called easing. And really, once we are in the animation, we want it to look quite smooth instead of it starting and stopping. Luckily, if you look in the top of the options, you can actually see the easing function and you can set it to ease in on the start one. Luckily, if you look in the top of the options, you can change how the easing works. Easing in is the slow start and easing out is the slow end. So I'm gonna set step one to ease in, all the other steps to no easing. And finally, I will set the last step to ease out. One of the ways that I use the move plugin is by combining it with streamer.bot to make stuff like the goal bar. Every time someone gives subs or bits, the goal bar automatically calculates what percentage that is from the goal and adds that to the level the bar is currently at by first changing the transform parameters and then activating the move source. However, if I go through that right here, then this will turn into a streamer.bot video and probably 30 minutes long. So if you want to see how I make the goal bar in streamer.bot, then I will tell you how you can find out about that later in the video. There is, however, one more thing that I wanted to show you because I think this is absolutely a game changer when it comes to how your stream looks. I have a redemption that I call the earthquake, which triggers a color correction filter that shifts my camera red and then removes it again. But if I would do that normally, then I would not have that nice easing fade into and out of the red. To make it animate smoothly, I use a move value filter, which is really quite cool. What we can do is add a move value filter to the camera and call it red. Then we are going to choose the color correction filter from the filter menu. For the move value type, we are going to choose a single setting. And for the setting, we are going to choose color multiply and set it to the red color that we want to have. This filter has a lot of the same options as the move source filter that we've just talked about, such as the easing, the simultaneous move, and even the next move. And it is the next move that we are going to exploit here because we, of course, want to turn our camera back to the normal shade. So to do this, we are going to scroll all the way back down and we are going to choose next move reverse. What this does, it will shift the color, but when it ends, it will do the exact same in reverse to bring it back to the original shade. And if you want your color to stay a little bit, then scroll back up, find the end delay and add a little end delay right there. I'm going for 500 milliseconds and that gives you this effect. Of course, if you want the filter to take longer from shifting to white to red, then you can also change the custom duration just to give that a little bit of easing time. But this is not the only way that I use these filters. No, no. 
I'm going to show you something that I have never seen anyone do before. What you're going to do is you're going to add a text source and add some placeholder text. Uh, this is going to change in a little bit anyway. Then you're going to open the filters and add a move value filter. And let's call this one setup. This time, leave the filter off and leave the setting on single setting. But in the settings, choose text. Then for the format, we are going to use time format using strf time. And the format is going to be percent %m colon percent capital S. Then set the value to a number of seconds. Say, for example, three minutes, so 180 seconds. We do want to change the custom duration to 10 milliseconds here. And then we are going to duplicate this filter and call it timer. Here, change the value to zero and set the custom duration to the number of seconds times a thousand that you set for your setup. So 180,000. Last thing to do is that you have to turn off easing for this one. Head back into the setup and as the next move, choose the timer. And now when you press the setup button, you automatically start a three minute timer that is completely accurate every single time. Normally, it is such a mess to get a decent looking countdown timer in OBS if you can't just find one online. But now it has just become easy because you can change your text with the OBS font editor and just have the timer run using the move plugin. There's so many things that the move plugin can do that is just not used by streamers. And in combination with streamer.bot, it becomes even more powerful. If you are wondering how you can make an incredible goal bar or simply download the import file and have it work out of the box, then check out the video right here. And as always, stream better, stream smart.